catch that ball! Oh, man, I can't find it. Oh. Honey, I know it's the playoffs and everything, but can we talk for a moment? Yeah, sure. I feel like the amount of time you spend watching football has been detrimental to the amount of quality interaction time that we have with our children. Oh, okay. It just makes me and the kids feel well. Like... Unwanted? Yes, exactly. I had no idea my actions were causing you to feel this way. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. I sincerely apologize for my selfishness and I humbly ask for your forgiveness. I forgive you. Great. Let's grab the kids and go do some arts and crafts. Oh, you gotta catch the... not just talking about the church really I'm talking about the Moore family is there anything more they can do for us really anything more I mean my gosh we were bumping our heads but thank God for Pastor Stan and his teaching and Pastor Jerry and Stan and Terry and Rick and oh my gosh the whole family has just been a blessing to us and so I just want to thank them I want to bless them in the name of Jesus We really don't, we don't say this lightly. We don't. We, we love to pray for them. And we love to pray for this church. And this church has been life, literally life to us. Not just to us, but I love hearing Miss Ernestine's, uh, 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 her message. Because I don't know if you know, but two years ago, uh, my son Jarrett, who's one of the singers up here. I love that. Um, Jarrett, Jarrett was the manager at a Minchie's, um, Yogurt, one of those ice cream yogurt places. I, I didn't spend too much time there. <laughs> but, but Jared was the manager there, and Miss Ernestine came by. And I was standing out front, and she recognized me, so she stopped. we started talking. As we were talking, she began to have a, a, a stroke right then and there. But the, because of the word in her, amen, because of the word she received here, you know how she says she never gets off that word? I don't know if you've ever seen somebody suffering the effects of a stroke, but praying in tongues. Refused, absolutely refused to let the, uh, uh, the, 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 the ambulance take her to the hospital. <laughs> and she prayed until I think we, a sister-in-law, a sister came and picked her up. And then she went to the hospital. But it's because of the word that was in her. And it's just testimony to this place and these people that have deposited the word in us. And so we are, hallelujah, we are where we are. Amen, because of them. And so quickly, quickly, we want to pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity. We lift up uh, the Moore family and Words of Life Fellowship Church and the body of Christ. And we pray over marriages, Father. We thank you that you said in your word that a man ought to leave his father and his mother and cleave unto a wife, and the two should become one flesh. And we thank you for that. We thank you for that you are faithful in your word, that we are not perfection, but thank God we're moving towards it. Thank you for Jesus, who is the pillar and supporter of our faith, who is the covering over our marriage, who saved our son when he was in danger who saved us when we were in danger. Thank you. Thank you, Father God, for all your blessings on marriages in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. So we want to, our, our, you know, it's funny that the, the kind of things that we've been talking about, they all involve communication. That's what we wanted to share this morning. I mean, it's nothing you haven't heard before. Um, but it's so vital to doing what we need to do, to having a victorious Christian marriage. Amen? Communication is, 
is just primo, right? You have got to be able to speak the same language. That's why the Bible talks about being equally yoked. Because if you're from, let's say, Mars, and she's from Venus, you're going to have some problems. Amen? And we want to just say, too, communication is not just for marriages. We have to communicate with every, people every day, with, our, with our, our sisters and brothers, with our bosses, with people we come in contact with in stores. So this is not just for marriage. What we're talking about today, you can take and apply to any area of your life if you, talk, if you speak with people. And that should be every one of us. So this is for everybody. So in the, the Bible has some things to say about marriage and relationships. And so over in Hebrews uh, 13, 4, the Bible says this, that manage, marriage is honorable. Amen? It's honorable. It's desirable. It's something that we need to strive for. You know, societies are built on marriages. Strong societies have strong marriages. And there's no, there's no uh, uh, you know, it's not rocket science that, the weaker our marriages get, especially Christian marriages, marriages right here in the church, the weaker they get, the weaker our society becomes and the more susceptible our kids are to the dangers that's out there. There's more things that they face now than we ever thought of when we were growing up. Amen? We know that. The question is, what are you going to do about it? You know, Josie and I are real about our marriage. We're real about the kind of things that we've gone through and the kind of things we still face on a daily basis, you know? And there's no doubt that if, you know, she just listened to me, those, we wouldn't have. <laughs> so, so let me just say this. The Lord has blessed us with, um, with um, laughter because, <laughs> he has, because things we used to argue about and, and we used to say that with, you know how you say you press your buttons? We can laugh about now because he really used to tell me that if you just listen to me, everything would be okay. And it would be a knockdown drag out. So the Lord has blessed us with, with humor. <laughs> it's not true. It's so not true. Genesis 2.24 says this. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto a wife. And soon after that, the word began to talk about the word marriage began to call that cleaving marriage. And the second part of that verse is, and the two shall become one flesh. In Amos, the Bible asks this question. Amos 3.3, 3, it says, can two walk together unless they be agreed? Is that possible? Can you walk together with somebody, but you're not on the same page? No, it's not going to happen. Not in any relationship, but in marriage, you've got a serious problem if you're not walking together. Amen? So then we turn over to this. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Anybody ever have evil communications with their spouse or somebody else? Anybody? Do you know what that's like? How's that working out for you? Was that fun? Evil communications. Some of, some, of the, some of the things that we do when we are married, like when David, I'm just going to talk from our experience, but when we were married, you know, you, you're never supposed to say things like, you, you never. You never put me first. You're not supposed to say that because you know that's not always true. We, all, we, never, we avoid never and always. You always say bad things. We know that's not true. You, you don't want to do name calling. This is evil communication. You, wanna, you don't want to do name calling when you come to, you know, you come when you're talking to your, your spouse. You don't want to, nobody wants to be called a bad name. It's just the way that it is. We want to use good words. You know, th if one thing that Pastor Stan has taught us at this church is talking about speaking good words over our situation, speaking good words over our, our family, speaking good words over our children. I was going to say this later, but it seems real good to say about now. You know, sometimes um, ladies and men do this too. When your husband do something, you know, that you think is a little goofy, you and, and some of you might say idiot. You know, you know, call him an idiot. Like but, Raymond. Like on Raymond, yes. Th that show you watch all the time, I Raymond. Lo I love that show, but. 
But the thing is. But it's not good for Deborah to call him an idiot all the time. <laughs> I'm getting That's to. That's not good I'm, communication. I'm getting. I'm getting to that. Okay. So the thing is, the thing is, we if we you know, but we really have to be mindful of what we say. It's the little foxes that spoil the vine. And if we continually call our spouse an idiot, and then they started acting idiotic, we're wondering why is he acting that way? Because we're getting what we say. We don't. We, we don't call them an idiot. We speak good words over them. <laughs> what about Aki? That's a Miami word. I never heard that word. I was at the University of Florida the first time she called me Aki. I had no idea what that meant. That was back in like 1978. I had no idea what that meant. I still don't know what the word Aki means. It's a, it's a fruit, isn't it? No, that's Aki. Okay. Oh, Aki. <laughs> yeah. Aki, Aki. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, Colossians 3.8 says this, but now ye also put off these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communications out of your mouth. Matthew 5.37, but let your communication be yea, yea, and nay, nay, for whatsoever more than these cometh evil. Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but only that, only that, that is good to edify so that it may give grace to the listener. It, it, it taught me a while to learn that. You know, I, I grew up on a football field. You know, there were wild animals out there. <laughs> we, you know, we, we, we fought for a living. We picked fights with people for a living. And so, you know, when you get a delicate flower, <laughs> you, you know, and you're supposed to live in harmony and peace and, you know, you got duckies and bunnies and all that junk running around. It's hard to get used to speaking nicely to somebody, especially you grew up in a family who used to fighting. Anybody have one of those? It was a family sport. Yeah, they, see, that's what I'm talking about. Go on, brother. Thank you. It was a family sport, and so we, you know, that's how we live. That's, that's the way we function, and um, Josie was not used to that. You know, her family actually hugged each other. <laughs> what is that? And then, and then David had relationships with his friends. Guys can do this where, you know, you can be mean to each other. You can say mean words to each other. You can hit and punch each other, and then you go have a drink together. Women don't do that, guys. Women don't want you to do that. And if you speak harshly to us, for the most part, we're going to shut down. So my husband had to learn that I was not his friend in that way, that he had to speak to me in a different way because, you know, women process things differently. So you can't call it a, a guy's acting like a jerk. You know, I'm sorry, but that's the word we use. And, you know, but we're over it in like five minutes. But Joe wanted to put up a wall of isolation and not talk. Now, we're talking about communication here. You know, you can speak and communicate with somebody, or you cannot speak and communicate with somebody. And so after a week of not speaking, I sort of got the idea that maybe I need to, you know, uh, use better words, use my words. And I, listen, ladies, I, I'm, that wasn't the best thing to do. The Lord had to deal with me about that. I think about it now, and I think, okay, that's just crazy to lose all that time because, you know, I would go, I literally could go a week without speaking to him, but that's not the best thing to do. We are not saying you should do that. Trust me, you shouldn't. But that was my coping mechanism at the time. James 1.19. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to move on. James 1, 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, be what? Swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. So, ladies, now you know sometimes when we say, you ask a question and we say, huh? Huh? What? It's not that we're not paying attention to you. We're thinking. We're, <laughs> we're choosing our words carefully. 
when you ask, is this dress make me look fat? I'm thinking. It's communication. It's the best part of communication that you take the time to say, it's not you. It's the dress. <laughs> the end of that, um, that, that scripture says, for the wrath of a man does not produce right, the righteousness of God. And we're going to talk about that later. But right now we're going we're gonna to talk about being swift to hear. Swift to hear means I'm going to quickly listen. And if one thing, I'm just going to talk about David and I now, even to this day, if one thing that we can do better is to listen to each other. <laughs> one of the things that I'm sure a lot of people have struggled with, and we, <laughs> okay, really, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so while he's going through his anger, <laughs> one of the things that David and I struggle with, and I'm sure a lot of you do too, is that when we would come to the table to talk to each other, so we would come. What David wouldn't come to the table. Let me just be upfront with it. He didn't want to. He didn't ever want to talk about anything. What I would do is I would say after a while, David, we need to talk. And then, David, tell him how you felt about that. <laughs> I'd rather be chop blocked by two 300 pound guys. Yes, and I knew it because his actions showed me. When I would come to the table, I would say, David, we need to talk. His eyes would glaze over. They'd start rolling. He'd be like, talk. He would say, talk. I know some of y'all, some of y'all men say this, talk, talk about what? <laughs> okay, really? So, but if I didn't initiate the coming to the table, he never would have come to the table. So, you know, we needed to come to the table, but what would happen when we came to the table to talk is because we didn't necessarily have the tools that we needed. Or, or, or maybe we had them, we just weren't implementing them at that time that we would start a conversation, no matter what it started about, and then it would always end up in the same place where he would go away angry and I would go away angry. So Dave and I call that now taking a lap around the mountain because as we all know, the children of Israel had to take a lot of laps around the mountain because they didn't do things properly. I've heard somebody say, I don't know if this is true or not, that a 40-day journey turned into a 40-year journey because they just wouldn't be obedient. They complained, and they just wouldn't do things the way the Lord asked them to do it. Well, sometimes we have that same situation in our marriages. We didn't read the books. I know a lot of people read books. And you go to the table thinking, okay, I'm going to do it differently this time. But you get there, and then you do the same thing. We start the conversation, and we end right back up in the same place. You got to take another lap around the mountain until you're willing to do something different, you know, until you're willing to do something different. So one of the things about listening means come to the table willing to listen. When, when I would tell David to, uh, we had to talk, he would come, and, and already we were in an adversarial position because I'm coming to defend myself because you're, in the, you're accusing that's usually what happens when we come to the table to talk. One is accusing, the other is, is defending, right? So we have to come to the table willing to hear. The Bible says be swift to hear. That means I am quick to listen. And when we listen, guys especially, that, that video was awesome because you want to stop all the other stuff. Make eye contact. Give me your attention and let me know that you're listening to me. That's the first step. And then, like, guys, listen with your guys and women. When I say guys, I mean everybody. Listen with your heart and your ears. Listen with your heart and your ears. So, again, we just we walked around the mountain. And then what happens sometimes when we come to the table to talk is that when David was saying something, I was so busy formulating what my response was going to be. I wasn't hearing what he was saying. And the same thing with him. He was so busy um, formulating what the response was going to be, he wasn't hearing what I was saying. So we got to come to the table prepared 
that I'm going to come with my listening ears on. That's what we tell the, the, the young children, come with your listening ears. So that's what we have to do. We have to come with our listening ears. My list was only like two things. Because I was good and he did a lot of bad things. <laughs> it's because you talked for so long. I had a chance to think about what I needed to say. So it was short and sweet. I was concise. Mm -hmm. That's one way to put it. So, so the, next, the next part of this whole thing is, is we need to be slow to speak. And David's going to talk to us a little bit about that. I was concise. You were. Slow to speak. I've already spoken about that. Look, we need to understand that we're two different people. God put us together. But we're two beings that need to find a way to wake, work through our problems. And so um, if Josie would, I don't know, feel like I was being attacked, you know, uh, you need to clean up. You know, it could be something just <laughs> as benign as that. And it, I would hear, you don't ever clean up. And that's what we hear sometimes. That's what guys hear. And so instead of me firing back, well, you don't ever clean up. Like, you know, a three-year-old. <laughs> I had to take time to think, okay, well, maybe she's right. Maybe I need to give in to this, you know, and we need to share a little bit more of the workload. But, you know, this is back in the days when I was playing football, and I thought, look, I'm already getting hit on the football field. Why do I have to come home and participate? I know, that's, that's bad. I know that's bad now. Jeez, I don't need you guys telling me that. I know it's bad now. <laughs> but being slow to speak, you know, we need to understand what the Bible says about that. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Put off anger and filthy communications out of your mouth. Let your communications be yay, yay, and nay, nay. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. I like this one. In Isaiah, it says this, The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, so that I should know how to speak a word in season, the endless weary. Do we know how to do that? Do we understand that our words need to be, as another Bible, uh, verse says, like apples of gold in pictures of silver? Have you ever heard that verse? Words fitly spoken are like apples of gold in pictures of silver. That's why we need to take our time. That's why we need to take our time before we explode on our children and say things that we shouldn't say to them. Because people are fragile. Okay? And we need to take care to nurture. Amen? I'm just going to add that. My, my mom used to have a saying. My mom had a lot of sayings, but she had this <laughs> one saying that's just, um, she says, um, whatever comes up shouldn't come out. And what she meant by that is just because you're feeling a certain way, that you're feeling angry, you're feeling like you want to just rail somebody, that don't mean you have to, it shouldn't come out. You should think before you speak. And that's a, that's a huge, huge thing. Words are powerful. Everybody in this church should know about words because our pastor have talked about words. And if we cannot apply words, what our pastor has taught us about in our homes and in our marriages and with our day-to-day -day communications, then we're missing it somewhere. It's just the way that it is. Before we go out to try to minister to other people, we need to minister to the people in our homes. Amen. You know? Amen. Yeah. Our husbands is our ministries, ladies, and, and, and men, your wives is your first ministry. So we need to make sure that we're speaking. We're building them up. We're saying words. Guys, sometimes we got to call things that be not as though they were. <laughs> we, you know, to tell the truth, sometimes we got to call things. But mothers understand that. Mothers understand that instinctively because, you know, I've, I've been teaching for 20 years. And sometimes there's a kid that you think, oh, my God, he is, you don't want to call kids horrible. But... 
they're pressing the limits real, real, real bad. And the mother will come and say, but he's just so, he's such a good boy. And you think, where, how, when, how? <laughs> but that's the kind of, that is the kind of, of, of blinders or the kind of way that we need to see our spouses through the eyes of Jesus Christ. Because we have to see our children through the eyes of Jesus Christ. And, and women can do that, trust me. Because we can always see the potential of them. Yeah, they did this thing, but that's okay. They're going to get better. And that's what, that's what saves a lot of our kids. So we got to apply that same kind of passion and that same kind of, like I say, passion to our spouses also. That's what saved us. <laughs> so, <laughs> think about this. People have different personalities and characters. And so we, we found four. There are four characters that, that will be very important to helping you communicate and recognize, you know, maybe when you've gone off the rails a little bit, like I can do sometimes, I can still do that, you know. Y'all hear him, you see him admitting it, that he does it. <laughs> First, <laughs> they're those people that get upset easily, but they're also easily pacified. It's easy to calm them down. There are people, number two, who are not so easily upset, but they're difficult to appease. They're difficult to calm down. Okay? We all know these people. They're us. They're, they're you. We know it. You know it. Just move along, okay? Number three, <laughs> there are those who are difficult to get upset. People who take a long time, they stew for a long time until they really get upset, but they're also easily appeased. These are the best guys. These are the best, this is the best kind of character because it takes you a long time to get upset with people. You give them grace, you give grace, but even when you get upset, you walk in forgiveness quickly. Amen? That's the best kind of character. That's that's who I'm growing into. I'm still a kid under construction, okay? But I'm growing into that kind of person. Unfortunately, the fourth kind of character is usually the guy that I am. Um, that's the guy who gets angered easily and difficult to appease. I'll admit it. I know that's hard for you to hear. But that's me. Pastor Jerry... I don't know how you did it. Because when I'm in the Holy Ghost and I'm praising and thanking God and somebody cuts me off. <laughs> he's, he's working on it, though. He's working on it. So that's going to I try. I really, I really try. And I know some of you, it's been, it's been some of you. Just like I probably cut you off, too. You know, so I understand. I understand. So we're going to go to the last one that's slow to wrath. And, you know, the, the, the God doesn't put these things in the Bible just to, to make it sound good, guys. <laughs> we have to be slow to anger. And that means, you know, one of the things I put down here is just stop flying off the handle. You know, some things are just not that serious. And you're not going to die. You're not going to die because you want to try to get somebody back for cutting you off. Nobody's going to eat you? Nobody's going to eat you. That's for sure. For the sake of time, we're going to kind of rush this a little bit. But, you know, when you come to the table to, to talk to somebody, there's going to be some things that they don't like about you. There's going to be some things that you need to change. But nobody wants to hear that they need to change. Why is that? Nobody wants to hear that they need to change. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. You don't want to hear. But the only way that you're going to get better the only way that you're going to make your, your, your marriage better, the only way that you're going to make your life better, the only way you're going to make your finances better is that you've got to take those things that you're doing wrong and, and correct them. And a lot of times when we're doing the wrong, we can't see it. Somebody else has to tell us, that's not right. You need to do things differently. Can we get two or three people to tell us? We may have to get two or three because sometimes, especially, and that's a good point, especially when your husband or wife tells you, 
all the time, we need to do this or you need to do something different. Why you do don't we, pay attention We to don't that. listen. And then somebody come and tell us, somebody from the outside come and tell us the same thing. And all of a sudden, the heavens have parted and you've got revelation. I used to tell Joe that all the time. <laughs> somebody can tell you something. And you'll just go along with it. But if I say the same thing, I've been saying that for 15 years. And you didn't listen to me. But all of a sudden, here's Pastor Jerry saying, <laughs> that's not true, that's not, not, not true, Pastor Jerry. But really? Yes. That's what so, we've gone through. Yes, but, but he's, I've told him the same thing, so we, that's going to be another day we'll talk about that. But it is true. It is true. We tend to not give our spouses the credibility that they deserve. You know, a prophet's not received in his own hometown. A prophet is not received in his own hometown. And that shouldn't be. That shouldn't be. We need to do better. One of the things we're going to talk about in closing is that you need to think about communication like negotiations. When you go to the table, in any situation, you could be negotiating a business situation, you could be negotiating how you're going to um, deal with your finances, whatever. But when, you are nego when, you, when two people come to the table to negotiate, everybody should walk away feeling like they won, like they were a winner. Because if you have a marriage, and let's just say David and me, and every time David and I come to the table, I get my way. And David always walk away not getting anything that he wanted. That's not going to be good for your marriage. You should not come to the table expecting to get everything that you're asking for. That's the art of a good negotiator. Right? In business, when we go to the table, when you're trying to buy a house, you make an offer, they counter. They can, you, you counter their offer until you come to a place where everybody feels like they can live with the decision. That's how our, that's how our, our communication should be in marriage and it should be with our kids even. Our kids need to have some negotiating power, but that's a whole nother topic, so we won't even broach that today. But when you're negotiating, when you're coming to the table with your wife or husband, you want to come to the table with that everybody's going to walk away from this feeling like a winner. Because if I win and David loses, ultimately I lose because our marriage is going to be adversely affected by it. So oh, we, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we just want to encourage you to, if you start off right, you can end up right. If you start off three degrees off, Anybody who flies or goes long-term, just even three degrees off, by the time you get to where you're going, you're a whole lot more than three degrees off. you gotta, you got to correct. you got to always um, tweaking what you're doing, always getting yourself back to where you need to be. So that's what we're just encouraging you guys to do today. Do you have anything else before we pray? That's it. So what we're going to do today is um, we're going to pray for marriages and we want to just encourage you. You don't need to be embarrassed. Dave and I try to be transparent that when we talk about these things, we've really gone through these things. And, and we don't even stand here today th um, pretending that our marriage is perfect because it's not. We struggle daily. But like David said, that we're doing better and we, we, we're, we're doing strategies and we try to make it better. And that's. And we laugh a lot. And we do laugh a lot. So if, you, if you're struggling today in, anything, in any area of your marriage, um, we're going to um, ask if you, would, if you want, if you can come, um, stand up and come to the front so we can just pray for you. And let me just encourage you again, don't be embarrassed because if, 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 everybody's if, going through yeah. a little something. And if David and I were down there, we'd have to come up to the front because there's always things that we could make better. So we're going to ask you now if you want to have prayer. Please just come up quickly to the front, and we're going to pray a quick prayer over you, and then we're going to return it back over to Pastor Stan and um, Teresa. Yes. Okay. You know, everybody has issues. Somebody has to, we have to make, you know what a perfect marriage is? It's a marriage that makes corrections, adjustments, and repairs. That's a perfect marriage. That's actually what the word, per, per, that's part of the definition of the word per, perfect. So if you just desire prayer for your marriage, even may, may, maybe you, 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 don't, you say, I don't want to come up, but come up. Just come on up. 
And, and, and for those of you, too, who are, who are thinking about getting married and been, um, praying to the Lord to bring you a spouse, um, you know, we, David and I pray over our boys that they are that the Lord is preparing them for their for their wives, and we pray that the He's preparing their wives for them. So if you want to come on up and um, get prayer for that too, that'll be awesome because it's never too early to start praying over your circumstance. Okay. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. We just bless every marriage. Yes, God. It can be better. Yes. There's a hundred percent chance. You have a hundred percent chance of having a great marriage. Amen. You just got to be willing. You've just got to be willing. And if let me just say this, if the Lord could do it for David and me, trust me on this one. We're not <laughs> we're, we're not saying something that we're we don't know. We know that if the Lord can do it for us, if the Lord can give us humor about things that used to set us off, it's just amazing to me that Dave and I can laugh about things that would put us where we, it would just build up walls in our lives. But if the Lord can do that for us, he is no respecter of persons. He'll do it for you. You just got to trust him. You just got to stand on his word. You just got to know that he, he is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he needs to repent and that he wants your marriage to be good. Amen. And we know there's some deep issues. There's some hard things. You know, there's, there's abuse. We know that. God knows it. And that's why he's called you. He's calling on you. I know there's a time before I really got saved. You know, anybody know what that means? Before you really got saved? <laughs> before you finally said, you know what? I really don't need to go to a club tonight. I really... I'm, I'm good in my own skin. I really can read the Bible on my own. I can, I can worship God on my own, and I don't need anybody else to usher me in to the throne room of God. Amen? If it's just me and God, that's fine. Me and the Holy Spirit, that's fine. It's me and Jesus, that's all I need. And there's some deep, deep issues. There's some, there's some things and some hurts and some challenges that you've been through and you've been feeling. God will take them. You got to give them to them. You know, I, we, we say all the time, you, you've got to unburden yourself. Amen. Just let those things go and give them to God. Is he ready? You want to start? Lord, we just come before your presence with thanksgiving and praise today, God. And Lord, we just come thanking you for this group of people that have come here today, Lord. You know every situation that they're dealing with, Lord. Their deepest deepest hurt, God, you know what it is. I ask right now, Lord, that you would minister to them to the very core of their being, God. I ask that you will touch every hurt, God, that you will heal it from the inside out, Lord. Yes. Lord, I just pray over their marriages today. I, have, I, I pray, Lord, that when they leave this altar today, they will leave with hope. Lord, that they will leave with hope, Lord, not because of who they are, Lord, but because of who you are. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And because of who you are, Lord, that you will equip them to do what they need to do, do their part in strengthening this marriage, Lord. Help them to look at them, Lord, not at their spouses. Help them to see to see their flaw, their faults, Lord, and their flaws. And, and Lord, I pray that you will help them to let you to allow you to work on them Lord trusting that you will work on their spouse Lord help them to leave this altar today knowing that they cannot change the other person but the only thing they can do is change themselves but that is enough in the mighty name of Jesus we thank you for it today thank God you, thank we you. thank you that you strengthen marriages today God I plead the blood of Jesus over marriages today in this church, Lord. We say marriages will be strong in this church, Lord. That those people who have been struggling, Lord, will, will trust you with it, Lord. That they will leave here with that burden light. That they will thrust those cares upon you because you care for them. They will walk out of here, Lord, knowing that they, they can't fix it, but you can fix it today, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. We thank Amen. you for victory today, yes, God. Yes. Victory in our marriages, Lord. Thank victory you, Lord. in our homes, Lord. We thank you foremost, and for, uh, Lord, for victories in our minds and peace, God. We thank you that they leave here today with peace, God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Speak to their hearts, Father. Speak to their hearts. Yes, Speak to their God. hearts. Yes, Speak to their hearts, Father God. We thank you. We thank you that you heal that deep thing, Hallelujah, Lord. that hidden thing. Yes, God. Uh, whether it's the spirit of pornography, we come against Hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The spirit of infidelity, we come against it in thank the name of Jesus. Lord. Hallelujah. We pray for a strong marriage, a strong thank marriage. You. Hallelujah. Lord. Stop hiding it. Hallelujah. You can't hide it from God. Don't try to hide it from God anymore, Thank anymore, you. anymore. Break it. Yes, Just break those God. chains. Hallelujah. Break those things right now. Oh, we break it. We break it in the name of Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Father God, that you heal it. You. Take it. Take Thank it, Lord. We give it to you. We give it to you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood over it. The blood over it. The blood over every marriage. The blood over every husband. The blood over every wife. Oh, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood over it. The blood, the blood, your healing power. Thank you. We come against the spirit of abuse now in the name of Jesus. We come up against the spirit of sexual immorality in the name of Jesus. Sexual abuse. We say you have to lose your hold over these people today in the mighty name of Jesus. We say they will not be ashamed anymore. Hallelujah. We say they will not hide behind the, the shame and the, the degradation of abuse anymore. We say that they leave here free in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We say that they'll be free to love their husbands and free to love their wives in Jesus' mighty name. We say that the sin of the past will not hold them anymore in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you for it, Lord. Draw back that husband. Draw him back. Draw him back to the church. Husbands, husbands with wives, wives with husbands. We call those husbands to the church to be with their wives in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There's too many of them that are by themselves. We come against abandonment and loneliness in Jesus' mighty name. You shouldn't be alone in your marriage anymore. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just come up against the spirit of, 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 of unforgiveness now yes. and a spirit of resentment. We tear the walls of unforgiveness down now in the mighty name of Jesus. We tear down the walls of resentment in Jesus' name. We say, Lord, that we will let love in, that love lives here in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for it today, God. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We just praise you today, God. You are worthy. You are worthy. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Before you go, before you go, if there's anybody here that hasn't accepted Christ as a Savior and Lord, we just call you forth. Right now, just join all these people up here. If you've never accepted Christ, if you need to recommit to Christ, I've had to do it a thousand times, a thousand times. You get to a point sometimes, you can call it backsliding, you can call it whatever you want. But sometimes you need to rededicate. Sometimes you need to press the restart button. Amen? Press refresh on that computer and just start over. You can start over. You can always start over. God is a good God. Amen? He's calling you. He's calling some of you. And if they're all Christians here, that's fantastic. We'll pray for you anyways. Oh, thank God. He's coming back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's Susie. He's calling. The Lord is calling. For people to be born again, for people to be rededicated. And I'm going to have that Galloway's pray. But please come and join this one. Or perhaps there's others. Please come and rededicate your life if you need to to Him. He's calling. He wants a fresh start for you. And rededicate your marriage. Come and renew your vows in front of the Holy Spirit. 
Come renew your vows. Renew your vows. Get restored. Restore your marriage. Amen. Now, if there's anybody who want to have the, uh, the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, if you need to have that today, come. Come. He said, the Bible says, come to the well and drink. So, you know, when you have the infilling of the Holy Ghost, he says they, they, they were endued with power. When you can't do it by yourself, you pray in the Spirit. And the Lord gives you what you need. He meets you at that point of need. So if you need that today and you don't have that, don't walk out of this building without having the indwelling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. If that's you, come. Come. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Set free and deliver. Is there anybody else who felt the leading, felt like the Lord was nudging you today and you just didn't make that move? Let me just tell you, this is the time, this is the place, it is right now. If you if you know that the Lord was tugging at your heart, come on up. Nobody's going to, listen, we're going to clap for you. Nobody's going to think something bad about you. We're just going to clap for you. We're going to be, we're going to rejoice with you. So if that was you and you need to come, please come now. We'll wait a, a, just a little bit. If you, if there's anybody else who needs to come, please come now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, right now we just pray over these that came today, God. Some came because they don't know you, Lord, but we know that you know them. Hallelujah, Lord. And some came because they need to rededicate today, God. So we say, Lord, we know that you just stand there with your arms wide open, waiting to welcome them back in the mighty name of Jesus. And, Lord, we just pray over those who came for the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, Lord, that dunamis power that comes with the Holy Ghost. We thank you today, Lord, that they will not leave this building unless they have the Holy Ghost in them, Lord. We pray, God, over this group that they will all leave here changed today. Changed in their minds, Lord. Changed in their homes. Changed in their finances. Changed in their socialization, God. Changed in their thinking, God. We just thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, and we just give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, I'd like everyone who came to the altar to receive Jesus or come back to him. I want you to say with me, because we're going we're to take care of business right here. Because he's here. The Bible's clear. It says, he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out, but take them in. So we're coming to him this morning. He's taking you in. And he is becoming the Lord of your life, or you're coming back to him as a prodigal, perhaps, and you're saying, here I am, Father. I renew my faith in you again. So I want everybody to pray this prayer. We're going to pray a salvation prayer right now. I want you to pray it out loud. Would you say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you now. I believe that Jesus is Lord. That he died on the cross for my sins. That he was buried. And he was raised from the dead for my justification. Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you. Come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. 
And I now confess, I am born again. I am a child of God. I belong to you. I'm in your family. And I thank you for it. Now my wife's going to come and minister the baptism to the Holy Spirit to you. Are you ready for the gift of the Holy Ghost? Do you want to receive it all this morning? If, um, if you don't mind, I would like to just say one thing. Um, you know, we only get out of our marriage what we put into it and out of our family. And so I want to just encourage you to go to the resource table, get some more information. Not only that, I would encourage you to go to the class. It is the second Sunday of every month. How many of you can make it at 9.30 a.m.? 9.30 to 10.15, it would be well worth it. You want to be around people that have strong marriages. If your goal is to have a strong marriage or have a stronger marriage, let's get around people that have strong marriages and hear what they have to say. So I would really encourage you to get in this class. We wouldn't have asked David and Josie to come share if we didn't have confidence in what they had to say and that they have a strong marriage. So first of all, thank you, David and Josie. You're a blessing, and we want to thank you for sharing and being so transparent with us. And, uh, you know, with that being said, we don't want to hold the service up, but the six that came up for that, and if David and Josie would like to stay up here, if you guys need uh, further prayer or ministry, they're available right here. In the name, meantime, God bless you, and thank you for coming, and I'm just going to pray with the six that came up here. And we love you guys. We'll see you next week.